What up guys, this is Ben from Life in 360 and today I wanna to talk about shooting wirelessly with your Theta 360 and using your smartphone as your remote trigger so you don't have to hold the camera. I found this feature to be super handy and it's helped me shoot some of the best images I've ever done because it's allowed me to take a step back instead of having my hand in shot and being right in the center of the planet. It's allowed me to become an inhabitant of the planet instead of being a dude taking a selfie. So you wanna connect your Theta camera to your smartphone via Wi-Fi. Fortunately, you don't actually need um, an internet connection. It does it without it, which is really handy. It means you can shoot remotely very easily. Next, we wanna go into the Theta S app and you click the logo down the bottom there, that little circle, and that'll take you to live view mode. In live view mode, we can now have full control over our exposure, as well as see the composition before we actually take it to make sure we're happy with lighting, composition and whatnot. And then the big button in the middle there, that then acts as our remote shutter. All right, so I wouldn't normally use a tripod, but it's an extra windy day and I don't particularly feel like going fishing or swimming at the moment. So I've just turned my camera on and obviously what's behind me is going to be the most picturesque um, thing within this environment. So I want to feature it as, as best as I can. So what I want to do is give it the clearest view possible um, from wherever I place the camera. So now what we're going to do is connect to our smartphone app. And now I'm going to bring up live view mode so I can see what I've got. I'm not liking it 100% only because this beam here is in the way too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition the camera uh, and hopefully give our theta, 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 a clearer view of the Harbour Bridge. Oh, that's looking much better already. So I'm just going to lean against this and here I go. I'm going to take this shot and smile in three, two, one. So first I tried standing next to the beam, but I didn't really like it because I was too far away from the Harbour Bridge and the two were competing with each other and you want them to be as close together as possible. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna sit here, maybe something like this. Okay, three, two, one, smile. Next I tried lying down next to the camera and I didn't like this either because firstly I was just too dark and you couldn't see me, um, but also I didn't like the composition. I was competing too much with the bridge and neither me nor the bridge was really prominent. So instead of me standing in the shade here, I want to position my face in the sun. So now I'm going to be much better lit when we do take the photo. I think I'm cutting off the bridge a bit where I'm standing now, so I'm going to just duck down. Finally, I tried ducking below the bridge and striking a pose and this worked much better. I was much happier because now I was working harmoniously with the bridge and it allowed me to create a more symmetrical shot later on while not detracting from the bridge nor myself in the final image. Often every photo you take will require a bit of fine tuning. So this means moving the camera position and moving yourself. It's worth it. Like if you've got five or 10 minutes, it's, it's worth hanging around and just taking a photo, uploading to your smartphone, preview editing it. Um, you can normally turn over about three photos in 10 minutes um, with different compositions and you standing in different places and different features being in, on different parts of the planet. It's worth it when you get that awesome image um, that blows everyone away. So one final thing worth noting is that I put the camera right in the path of the shadow of this beam here. And that's because I don't want the sun directly hitting the camera because whenever the sun directly hits the camera, it's going to make a, a huge kind of white spot in the sky and it just never looks good. And if you expose for that white spot, then everything else is too dark. So if possible, try and avoid the sun hitting the camera. Look, it's not the end of the world at all. In this situation, because we're using auto exposure, keeping the camera in the shadow is working to our advantage. All right, so now let's take this image into Roll World and see what kind of a tiny planet we can make. So let's go ahead and open up the app there. And let's make magic. All right, so we hit the crosshair. We hit photo, so now we've imported. I'm going to uh, just rotate it, uh, invert it a bit, a bit more rotation, go for a little zoom there. It's looking good already. Uh, yeah, going a little bit closer, I think. Pretty happy with that. How cool is it that you can like edit an image in the 15 seconds it just took me and now I've got a damn good planet already. I mean, I'm still gonna do heaps more to it, but I think it's pretty darn cool that you can edit so quickly and in, on something that fits in your pocket. Like that's amazing. Just invert it a little bit more. It will definitely need a bit of color correction, but the way the architecture really kind of pops off the planet like that, I'm really happy with it. So let's go ahead and export. So we go picture on screen and I wanna go 1920 and camera roll. All right, so now let's, let's do a quick color grade in Snapseed. 
Okay, open, and there it is. So I'll go tune image. If you don't have Snapseed, would highly recommend it. It's such an amazing tool. It's, a, it's like Photoshop for the iPhone. You can do everything with your thumbs. It's incredible. That's pretty down blue. All right. I like my colors either really bright or black and white. Um, I don't like dull colors at all. I give the bright version about a seven out of 10. In order for me to be happy, it needs to be at least eight or, or above out of 10. So let's have a look at the black and white version. I reckon we've got a black and white planet here. Um, we just need to adjust some other things. Uh, so let's play with the brightness. How about the ambience? There we go. We're getting a bit more contrast from that. Still needs to be brighter. Um, I want to get that background or the, uh, the sky there as bright as possible. So let's uh, raise the highlights. Mm, no, it's a bit too much. We're losing too much detail by doing that. What about shadows? Uh, that's good again for the contrast. Um, our exposure is pretty good, so we don't really uh, need to play too much with the highlights or shadows. Whenever your exposure is bad, like if your face is too, is too dark, the shadows function here will really help you out. Uh, so, uh, all right, let's just play with the ambience again. No, no, it definitely looks better down there. Uh, contrast, let's have a look. All the way to the right, oh, too much contrast. Let's go all the way to the left. When color grading, I play with every single slider. Same with the edit as well. Um, just so you can be 100% sure you've made the, the absolute best decision. So do it anyway, even if it looks horrendous, just do it. All you have to do is swipe your thumb. You don't lose anything by doing it. Hey, that's actually not looking too bad. Uh, bring the brightness right down because it really um, highlights the, uh, the, the, the lighter bits um, in the middle. It makes them stand out more. It's almost added a vignette, uh, a natural vignette to our image, which is really good. It looks quite natural. It almost looks like a meteorite uh, flying through space. So now we want to bring up those highlights a bit more. That's looking really good, actually. I'm very happy with that. Uh, what else? Um, I think I'm... I think let's just add another vignette on top of that. So we'll go vignette down there. And here we obviously, there's our circle for vignette. Want to make it, you never want to go in too, too much into the middle because then you start darkening details that need to be visible. Um, and you don't want to go too, too far out either because then um, it's just kind of pointless, isn't it? So I'll go for a circle about that size and just a little bit makes a big difference. Holding your thumb to the screen will give you a preview of your vignette and the difference it made. So that's with, without, with, without. So it looks a lot better with. Oh, it's lightened a little bit. There we go, so 27 vignette has made a difference. It's made our image more dramatic. So I'm going to go ahead and, yep, ready to export. So now it's as simple as save, save a copy, and there we go, it's saved to our camera roll and I'm gonna upload that to Instagram now. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this vid and I hope you start shooting wirelessly as soon as possible because you'll shoot some of the best images you ever shoot without the camera in your hand, I promise you that. If you wanna learn more, I have a book out, it's called Life in 360, A Beginner's Guide to Tiny Planet Photography and it'll teach you everything to do with tiny plants and shooting on a camera like the Ricoh. So check it out and until next time guys, keep shooting.